actually this presentation was made uh, for, of my paper at Oxford University 10 years actually after, after I started uh, Library Renewal Partnership. So it was a redo of the paper. So I'm gonna try to compress that into a few minutes. Basically, we're looking at you know, a third space, like a library as the solution to many of the development problems. And I'll show you exactly how. But the main focus here is about reading. Reading is about connecting to the other. Reading is about building critical thinking skills. Reading is about affirmation. And those skills are important for literacy, numeracy, and development. And really, that's the building block of the nation writ large. When you look at the Philippines itself, the encouraging news is we're actually in the top five of readers worldwide, people who want to read. Why people don't believe that fact and the statistic is because we don't see a lot of it. But my feeling and my thesis is that it's because we don't have the facilities to do that. We don't have third spaces. And that's why we're gonna to try to build these third spaces so that the decline right now, which is slowly you know, being addressed by the DepEd and other leaders to bring it up, back up to a healthy level. Close to 50 million people in the country still want to and do read. So how do we arrest that slide? The question is, is how do we do that? And the answer is to build a love for reading. In other countries, for example, with other NGOs like Room to Read, they've had a success rate of over of close to double uh, the love of reading and the, the approach and benefit from reading by having small libraries in either schools or in the communities that don't have access to schools. In the Philippines, if you look at this map, it's really a critical development you know, uh, you know, reference, when you look at the red parts, the orange parts, the yellow parts, those are the areas that need a lot of help. Incidentally, these are the parts that are also vulnerable to climate change, uh, poverty, and, and, you know, also, you know, political dynasties that have actually not helped by way of governance and war. If you look at our brothers and sisters from Muslim Mindanao, that is the area where we need these public third spaces so that we're able to build the kind of country that we need evenly and equitably. What's important here is if you look at this slide here, the first slide, it's still a statistic, notwithstanding all the efforts and the growth of the population right now, for every 100 persons that actually go into school, only around 10, a little over 10 will make it with a college degree. So if you look at the downward chart, the invisible part is the upward triangle. This triangle here, that basically shows that there is an invisible triangle of people not in the school system who are suffering, who vote for the wrong politicians and who do not contribute to society. And if you think about the bottom chart, it's females who are actually at risk in the Philippines, either through teenage pregnancies or the lack of resources or the preferences of a patriarchal society not to fund their education. So there is a gap that needs to be addressed. F public schools also have a shortage of around 70,000 per year. And at the end of the day, that population keeps growing. And because of the math mismatch of resources and science and, 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 uh, and, and, and availability, you're really looking at the Philippines being close to the bottom of the barrel in terms of literacy, which is really the key to numeracy. So the critical skills we need for the next Asia CEO are missing here without a proper intervention from the public and private sector. Our solution beyond all the other brilliant speakers we have today is to build third spaces. Third spaces that allow people regardless of religion, background, economics, wealth, sexual orientation, it doesn't matter. You're welcome at the library where you can learn and be the best you can and then get back into the school system and be a productive member of society. These public spaces are at risk. This is a picture in China where even a small public library is being overcome by development, a country with a lot of growth and arguably very little soul. And if you look on the other end, the other Republic of China, you're looking at a country that actually has a strong focus on education. And this library, which is at the center of one of their beautiful city and towns, is actually the center of development for them. It's free, it's open, it has the most expensive real estate there, and it's the center of life in Beitou in Taiwan. And that is a library built along the indigenous infrastructure. In essence, if you look at the numbers, apart from literacy and educational achievement, there is a multiplier effect to building libraries. For every $1, pound, one euro, or peso spent, there's a four fourfold economic benefit. And that's in studies across the, the board in terms of educational achievement, the fact that you don't have to borrow a book, the fact that you have access to resources for livelihood, and the fact that you're building a community of learners, that helps the economy writ large. 
In the Philippines, it's more important because not only in the map do we show the disparities in terms of poverty and wealth, you're also looking at the fact that the Philippines are the fourth most vulnerable country to climate change. And that's why you need these libraries also as third spaces. And we've used them before for disaster relief where these libraries, which are in the second floor or upraised areas of communities, are actually able to house people for temporary shelter when there's a typhoon or an earthquake. The goal of the LRP was to build 200 million community centers, uh, 200 community centers to help 2 million citizens. But we're happy to note that now, after, after 10 years, we've gone fivefold. We are on our thousandth library, and I'm going to show you more about that. I just want to show before I show the pictures that we are building on theoretical models that actually work. This is a public private partnership model from Harvard University, the Kennedy School of Government. We are building on public private partnerships. We have over 25 partners from the Land Rover Club to Rotary to all the publishers in the Philippines that make sure that the resources are leveraged and that we don't need to use so many public funds. More importantly, we're going down to the barangay level because in the Philippines, in the barangay level, there are 43,000 barangays and only over less than 2,000 have libraries. So the focus for us is to build town libraries, which are almost 50% there and get them down to the barangay level so that they can spread that knowledge and those third spaces for access for education. We can build a library in two weeks. Our model has improved from two years to two weeks. And in the long run, we want to help not just literacy, but to reduce crime, to improve livelihood, and to improve contributions. And that has happened in places like Brazil, which also has a high poverty rate, and in areas like Nepal, where people are now contributing to the community thanks to these third spaces and working with other education champions. So as I close, I will show you a quick tour of our libraries up the north, down south for Muslims and Christians alike, in Batanes up north with little libraries, Adam Zalocas Norte, where there is a book for every citizen, in Lanao del Sur, where the lakeside communities are now building libraries themselves, mobile libraries in fact, Pad Palawan, Aita, this is Apple the Apps Village, of the, of the black eyed fees in Pampanga and he supported us building libraries. This is, our, this is our football library. So we have a football field and a library in Davao, which is arguably the new capital of the Philippines. And if you look at the Mangyan community in Oriental Mindoro, we're also building a library there. Finally, we're exporting this model across the region. We built 75 libraries in Bhutan with the Paro College of Education with a few Filipino tourists who are willing to spend their money and contribute their volunteer time. And basically now we're growing that library system with the Ministry of Education. And that's me delivering the ceremonial don donations and a commitment to our brothers and sisters in Bhutan that the Philippine Bayanihan model will work for the Bhutanese gross national happiness. So at the end of the day, we have more libraries across. The more important thing to note is that li libraries are key to poverty alleviation and they're key to equality in the Philippines. I want to share with you lastly that these libraries are now innovating. We have a bookmobile that's coming out next year with Musea Pambata, and our thousandth library is a nice library on an island in Caleraya, where, where we, we will be neighbors with the Mills and, uh, and Rebecca and Chris and, 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 and kids and, and Richard, and, and, and everybody will be happy to enjoy the spot for the barangays in Caleraya. Finally, I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity. This is nothing new. This is not a model we've imported from overseas. This is a public-private partnership model that is actually the Bayanian spirit that has been dormant, and now we can rise and contribute and work together with. Maraming salamat. Let's keep calm and read more.